Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. And I am going to show you how to do some mirror stamping. So I'm going to wait a few more minutes just to see um, who can join us. And I'm going to watch comments. I'm hoping I'll be able to see them. My laptop's on my desk. And I don't know if I'll see comments. So, But if I don't see them, and I, I'll make sure and um, get back to you after the video if I can't keep up with you while I'm stamping. So, I hope everyone had a nice week. Starting of a new week. This is a, a technique. The mirror stamping is a technique that I just showed my monthly group. And they seem to really enjoy it. So I hope this is something new for you. And if not, maybe a refresher. I think you'll really enjoy it. Let me give it just a couple more minutes. Welcome, if you're coming. Oh, I see a couple of people are here. Hi, Jana. Thank you for joining me. I'm just waiting for a couple people to show up. Give it a few minutes to see if other people can join us. So while we're waiting, Jana, have you ever done mirror stamping before? Is this something new for you? I know it's really quiet. We are going to be using a couple of stamps today. We're going to use the Easter Friends. You did a long time ago, Jana. Okay, good. So we're going to use the Easter Friends stamp set tonight. This is so adorable. It's in the mini. It's not carrying over. So if you want this stamp set, you have to get it before the end of May. But you want to get it now since Easter is coming up pretty soon. We're also going to be using a retiring stamp set, um, Sailing Home. I love this. This is going to be retiring out of this book, so you have to get it before the end of April because the new book's live on May 1st. So I'm going to show you a couple of different projects. One project we made in my stamp club, and one project. Um, is brand new for tonight. So everybody who comes and comments tonight, I will pick a winner and you'll get my project for tonight's video. I'll send you a uh, snail mail, happy mail. So welcome. Hi, Nancy. All right. I've waited a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and turn you down. I'm hoping you'll be able to see my, my board. So I'm going to turn you over. Okay. Let's turn it, turn it the other way. There's a glare. Okay, get some more light here. I think that's backwards. Uh, well, I'm learning. So maybe you'll learn with me. <laughs> All right, so... The first, well, the first of all, we're going to be using the Stamparatus and one plate and also the silicone mat. And if you don't have one of these, it's 
I think it's six dollars. Stampin' Up! sells one. They're very, very handy, not only for mirror stamping, but for any craft project. You can glue um, little projects on here, and it won't stick to anything else on your table. I find if I put glue on small pieces, um, it sticks to everything. So nothing will stick, and it's good for, for that, too. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to start with the little chicky here, or the duck. I'm going to use the duck. So the way that you put him on your silicone mat is face or stamp down like you're going to use him. Just like that. And then we'll pick him up with our plate. And we're going to use Memento Black Ink. Ink him up. Oh, before I go any further, it's a good idea if you put a stamp set under your um, plate. So when you put pressure on this side, when you put ink on your stamp, you're not putting pressure on this hinge. So if you keep something underneath it, it's this stamp set like this, it makes it a nice, it, it's pretty even with the hinge. So when you go to put pressure on your stamp, uh, you can't see that. Sorry. So when you go to put pressure on your stamp, it doesn't put all the pressure here on the hinge. So I'm going to ink it up. And then we're going to stamp straight on the silicone mat. So now what we've done is make this silicone mat a stamp. Can you see the ink? I'll see if you can see it. So now he's perfectly inked on there. And then you get your cardstock. And you line up. I put my paper right up against the back wall of the Stamparatus, being careful not to touch the silicone mat just yet. And I'm going to line him up as best I can over here. And then once you've got your paper placed, you can place it down and then rub the back. And then you pick up your stamp. And I did him wrong. <laughs> I do it every time. So that's okay. We have two sides of the paper, right? So I'm going to wipe off the silicone mat. That's what this, this is a chamois. I cut it in half. These are essential if you're going to stamp with the Stamparatus. So I did him wrong because he's too far over here. I wanted him over here. So I'm going to do him again. If you've ever done mirror stamping, it can be a bit challenging. So I'm going to practice on this side again just to make sure it's where I want him. Let's see. Yep, I want him over here. Okay, so now we're going to do it for real. Sorry about that. We all make mistakes, right? All right, so now he's stamped on my silicone. I'll get a clean piece of paper for you. And again, we're going to line up the paper against the wall of the Stamparatus and make sure that you're not too far. Let me make my, I think I'm hanging off my camera a little bit. Sorry about that. So I'm going to make sure he's not hanging off the side of my paper. Put it up against the wall and then straight down. And then you rub the ink and pick him up. There he is. That's the way I wanted him. Okay, now we're going to pick him up, put him on a block. I love my chamois too, Jenna. I don't, you can't have a stamparatus without a chamois because then you don't have to move your stamp to clean it. You can stamp it many times in different colors if you want. So now here I'm going to stamp him the correct way, like we always stamp, right next to him, my mirror. So now he's going both ways. He's got a little friend. Isn't that sweet? Eight 
And in this case, I wanted his um, feather, his uh, wings to overlap a little bit because they're like they're holding hands. Usually when you do some mirror stamping, you want it to touch just a little bit because um, either they're holding hands or I'll show you in the boat here in a minute, you'll have a reflection and they usually touch. So here's the duck. And what we're going to, I won't color him right now because that'll take too much time. But then you just mount it on a piece of grainy apple green like this. And then I stamped some Daffodil Delight with a, one of the, the little chick, the other little chick from the stamp set. This guy right here. And I stamped him all over the front. And I also did a few in the middle because he's so cute. And the sentiment. And then you could just attach it to your card like this. And then here's the here's one we did in class. So this is the one that's colored, and we stamped some grass. I added a little bit of the Evening Evergreen ribbon. And this one I did flowers on the yellow, and I also did some chicks on the inside. Okay, so there's card number one with little ducks. Okay, so now... Um, while we have this particular stamp set, I did not make a card, but I wanted to see what the rabbit would look like as a mirror image. So I did the little bunny, and um, I don't have any kid stamps, but this would be perfect for a baby card for someone who's welcoming twins, perhaps, or a set of twins for their birthday, or something like that, or best friends. You could give it to your bestie. But I thought the little bunny was sweet, so there's just another idea with the same stamp set. All right, now I'm going to move along and show you, be sure to ask questions as we go. Hopefully I'll see them and be able to answer them. Um, next card is going to be the sailboat. I'm just trying to get my paper organized over here. So we're gonna bring back our Stamparatus. Something else you might want to keep handy is a sh um, microfiber cloth. My chamois sometimes um, has ink on it, and it, it's not supposed to transfer ink, but sometimes it does. Um, but you you can have a microfiber cloth, and that'll clean your stamparatus really well, too, between stamps. And you can clean off your silicone mat. I apologize. My cat is likes to stamp with me. All right, so I'm going to use this one for my apparatus over here. So the next one is going to be Sailing Home. This one is perfect for reflections. So not only do you, do you get to make two little buddies, <laughs> I know Jen, Butterscotch is such a nosy cat. <laughs> um, so we have buddies, in, like the ducks, and then now we're going to do a reflection in water. So this is the Sailing Home set, and just quickly, I usually store my dies in the case on a piece of magnetic, uh, this is actually a register cover that you can get at Lowe's, and I also usually cut out a bunch of stuff while I'm cutting stuff and just put it in a little clear envelope and keep that in the stamp case, and that way if I'm in a hurry, or I just need a little piece. I don't have to use the Big Shot every time. So keep some extra pieces in your stamp set. Just a little tip. So tonight we're going to use the large sailboat. There's two, a smaller one and a large one. I want to make sure I'm in the camera. So remember to put your stamp down on your silicone mat in the way that you expect to stamp. So that's the way you usually stamp because a stamparatus is essentially just a large clear block. It's just a little bit easier to position. So just think of it as a big block, same thing as your as any of the other ones that we use. All right, so now I've got my 
sailboat on there. I'm going to ink it up. And you'll notice when you do this, it's kind of second generation stamping because this is first generation on my silicone. And the second generation is the stamp again without re-inking in between. So it's a little bit lighter. So again, we're going to line up the card right up against the wall of the stamp apparatus, and you can kind of move it if you need to to make sure your image is centered on your cardstock. And then just place it down and rub the back. I'm going to pick up your paper, and there's my stamped image. Pretty cool, huh? Now I'm going to clean this before I make a mess, because I've done that too many times. <laughs> Do you need to clean as you go, too? Do you find that you set stuff down on your stamped images, and now you've ruined your project? <sighs> okay, so now we pick up our stamp, put it on a block. I'll move my stamparatus out of the way. And remember, we're going to stamp a reflection. So this is the reflection that we just stamped because it's the lighter of the two. Okay, so now get our black ink back. And the way I love these clear blocks because you can see straight through to where you're going to stamp. So you can line up your image so they touch because they're going to touch right on the water because this is a reflection in water. Give it some nice, even pressure. Wait just a second and pull it up. And then here's our reflection. Pretty simple, you think? Y'all, I still like to use my cleaner, my um, cleaning pad, this when I clean stamps, because I find the chamois, I'm clumsy with it. Let's, I'll just say it. So the chamois is really helpful for the stamparatus, but not for cleaning my stamps. So here I'll take you uh, through finishing this card really quickly, because it doesn't take long. Um, I'm going to use Misty Moonlight, which is retiring at the end of the catalog. So if you love this color, make sure you get it now, because in colors retire very very quickly so this is the blue we're going to use and we're going to use some blending brushes so you get a little two for one I guess tonight you get a little bit of blending technique along with mirror image stamping so I have a piece of typing paper here and I'm going to cover up my mirror or actually the it's the darker of the two so I'm coloring my water right here So we're going to ink it up in the misty moonlight. Make sure you hold on to your paper, your project paper. And start off the paper and start swirling on. See how that goes? Now I like to go like this because it's water. If you go straight across like this, it kind of gives it the effect of ripples, I think. Play with it. You can't go wrong. It's just ink and paper, right? So here's my reflection. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it around and we're going to cover up the water. And I'm going to use the same Misty Moonlight. And I'm just going to come around and do that top part here because I'm going to do sort of a sunrise, whoops, a sunrise technique here, I guess. So a little bit of blue, and then we're going to come with a little bit of Daffodil Delight. Make sure your mask is on there correctly. And again, start off your paper just to get that bright ink off your paper because you don't want to be a you don't want a big blob of ink. Hang on to your paper. And I blend it into the blue because sunrise, it's the, the sun is coming up right behind the boat, right? So there's my sunrise. 
and I like a little bit of yellow down into the water because the sun's coming up right there, I think. And again, there's no right or wrong. Just color whatever makes you happy. Okay, then I'm going to use the Crumb Cake Blend Marker because we have two colors, light and dark. This one happens to be light. And color in your boat. The fat tip makes it a pretty easy and quick to color in because we have a fat tip and a writing tip or a smaller tip. So I like to use the smaller tip to color small areas like this tiny little part of the sail so you don't get too much outside the lines and in the points. Do you like to color? Do you find coloring therapeutic? Sometimes I do. And it blends nicely with that yellow, so it makes the sail a little bit different than the just brown. And then I come back in with the brush tip again and just lightly color in some of the darker areas. You can use the same marker, the light marker or light and dark. And if you let it dry just a little bit and add light on top of light again, it'll still give you a little bit of depth of color, but it won't be as dark as the dark blend. So you can see the difference between the little house part and the boat part because I colored the house part again with the same light marker. So there's your reflection. And then here is the finished card. I stamped on Misty Moonlight paper with the anchor in Misty Moonlight ink. And I just layered up my focal point with some crumb cake. And then I have a couple options. You tell me which one you like. I have this one. This die comes with the, or it, it doesn't come with, but it's part of the um, bundle. It's this die right here. And the words, let hope be your anchor through the storms of life. So I have this. But I've also got a different stamp set. Thinking of you on your special day, if that sentiment doesn't really match what, what you're feeling. This is Inspired Thoughts. And I also cut out a ship wheel from the same die set out of silver foil. So I have some dimensionals on there. I need one. I'll put a dimensional on the back of this just to save time. We'll put a dimensional on the back of our ship wheel. Put it there. You probably want to use a glue dot so you can't see it, but I'm just doing it real quick so we can, I can get through this for you. So I'm going to put that maybe there. And then like that. That's it. So we have a reflection technique. And you have your sweet little buddies technique. And the rabbit is here somewhere. I didn't make a card with him, but again, that could be a, a baby card or for twins or something like that if you wanted. All right. That went by really fast. <laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping that you learned something. Rewatch it again to help with the reflection technique and learn how to place your stamps. Practice on scratch paper when you do buddies, buddy mirrors, so that you get your duck in the right place and you don't stamp them too far on the wrong side like I did the first time. Um, reflections are a little bit easier because it just goes up and down. So, thank you for joining me. Thank you, everybody. Um, I, again, for everybody who comments, I will put your name in a drawing and I'll send you one of my projects as a thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to turn you back around. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. And let me know in a comment if there's something, another um, technique that you want to learn that we can do together. And I'll be happy to do something and put that together with us. So I will see you next time. Thank you.